what are the top five books that you should read on the topic of Christian philosophy? That's what we'll be discussing in this video. Welcome, I'm Jordan, and this is The Analytic Christian, the channel that helps you explore Christian philosophy and theology. Today, I'm joined by Dr. Eric Yang. He's been on the channel several times at this point. It's always good to have him. Thank you for joining me again, Dr. Yang. Thanks for having me back on, Jordan. I wanted to get you on because um, you have written this little book on uh, philosophical theology, and I thought you would be a good candidate, uh, somebody good to bring on to ask, you know, what are the top five books that somebody should read when they want to get into Christian philosophy? Uh, so if, I guess I should say this first, if somebody asked you, what is Christian philosophy? What would you say? Uh, quite broadly, I would say that it is philosophical investigations into Christian topics or issues and ideas that Christian Christians care about. And so it's quite broad because philosophical investigations, as you know, philosophy uses a lot of different tools and methodologies. And I think all of that is fair game as we examine Christian teaching and doctrine and so forth. Very good. Okay. So I asked you to get at least five books, one of them uh, maybe giving a kind of general introduction for somebody that's new to this area. And then the others, maybe, you know, going a little bit deeper uh, into different topics. Um, so what's number one in your list? Yeah. And, and before I even answer that, I, I should make some initial comments. And the first is I'm going to restrict myself to books by living philosophers. I think otherwise, if I'm talking about Christian philosophy, I might have to cite Augustine and Boethius. So um, I'm just going to restrict it to living philosophers. And of course, any list is going to be uh, ones that not everyone's going to agree upon. So this is just the ones that made a strong impression upon me. And so the first one, and you asked for one that would be a good introduction, while it's not as broad in scope, I would say Hud Hudson's Grotesque in the Garden. So I'm a big fan of Hud Hudson. I think in all of his books, even the ones that are very metaphysically substantive, there's some connection with Christian doctrine at the end, and I love the way he does that. And Grotesque in the Garden is an introductory book but it's through a narrative and it's from the perspective of an angel and then a human being. And I don't want to give any spoilers because I think it's worthwhile, but it addresses the problem of evil, divine hiddenness. It considers skeptical theism and some of the worries related to skeptical theism, such as divine deception, but also gets into value theory, moral psychology, well-being. And because it's in a narrative, I've taught this a book several times. My students love it. It incites the imagination. I think philosophy is more than just giving logical arguments. It's um, employing many of our cognitive uh, faculties, and I think imagination and narrative is a crucial one. So I think Hudson's Grotesque in the Garden is a great introduction to doing Christian philosophy. Some of the themes are probably uh, befitting what we might say is just like philosophy of religion in general, but there are some aspects and themes that are unique, I think, to the Christian, um, to, to Christianity. My patrons get to participate in a book club that meet on Zoom once a month. And one of the books that we did, that we read together in the book club was A Grotesque in the Garden. Oh, yeah. And it was a lot of fun to read yeah. that book. And it's like you said, it's uh, especially if you're somebody that, maybe appreciates fiction more than a kind of dry analytic philosophy paper. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, I think will definitely appreciate that book. Okay. So that's number one. Uh, what about number two? Yeah. So this is a no particular order and I don't want to overlap with the, uh, the list that Sam Liebens gave. Otherwise, I might say, staying on the theme of problem of evil, Eleanor Stump's Wandering in the Darkness. In fact, I think her whole corpus is, is, would be a great introduction to philosophy and religion. But since I'm not going to choose that because Sam already did, uh, I would pick uh, Marilyn McCord Adams's Horrendous Evils and the Goodness of God. 
Uh, I think it's terrific, especially the ways in which the problem of evil was being discussed when that book came out and she was trying to shift the discussion and focus more on particular evils, these horrendous evils, these um, particular sufferings that she wanted to address and highlighting the incommensurate goodness of God and the defeat of evil so that the person who suffers would regard their, their own life as worthwhile. Um, and, and so this thought that you can't just have a theodicy that's general. There's got to be a sense in which God is defeating evil for that individual person. So uh, I'm a big fan of that book. There, uh, there are parts of it that one could criticize, I might criticize, but I, I think it's a, it's a great book and a great discussion. Uh, if, if I'm allowed to do an honorable mention, I think you, you said I could do that. Um, yeah, yeah. I might also recommend, uh, in connection with this, Peter Van Inwagen's The Problem of Evil. Again, a very different approach, but very interesting way of addressing the problem of evil. Well, I, I'd say pr to some extent, uh, both of those books have a uh, at least some element of a of a distinctively Christian perspective on the problem. So um, I'm thinking of Marilyn McCord Adams saying something like, uh, those who suffer horrendous evils in this life can more closely identify with uh, Christ. Um, and so uh, that that's a distinctively Christian element that, you know, apart from Christianity, you might not say something like that. Um, probably something similar with Peter Van Inwagen. He, he gives a, uh, a kind of narrative of how uh, mm. vast amounts of evil, but the narrative uh, closely resembles something like the fall. And uh, so again, it, it has this kind of Christian element to it. Um, okay. So you mentioned uh, horrendous evils and the goodness of God as number two. And the honorable mention was Peter Van Inwagen's book on the problem of evil. Mm -hmm. What about number three in your list? Yeah, so I was trying to think about specifically Christian doctrines. I think one terrific book is Tim Paul's In Defense of Conciliar Christology. It's a big fan of, of Tim's work, big fan of this book. Uh, some, some people criticize analytic philosophers who engage in Christian doctrine as being out of touch with the historical development of doctrine. And I think Tim's book shows that that does not hold uh, for, for some uh, analytic philosophers engaged in, in these kinds of inquiry and so there's it's very rich it, it touches on the so-called fundamental problem of christology dealing with logical issues he canvasses several several positions and criticizes them he offers a fairly uh, novel approach that's historically uh, developed it's clear just how rich and vast Tim's knowledge is of the historical development of the doctrine of the incarnation. And uh, he has a sequel to the book in defense of extended conciliar Christology. So that would be my honorable mention where he deals with multiple incarnations, uh, Christ's freedom, Christ's temptation and impeccability and so forth. Mm -hmm. I've had Tim Paul on a number of times uh, to talk, talk about the incarnation. So viewers that would like to, see some of my interviews with him uh just go check those out okay that was number three uh in in defense of conciliar christology by tim paul what about number four yeah this is, <laughs> it's getting hard there's so many books i want to mention but I, I can't uh include them all um but one that made a strong impression on me a while ago was uh, linda zagzepsky's uh divine motivation theory so offering a fairly novel moral theory or meta-ethical theory. And the older view focuses on emotions as being primary, but she seems to develop it later on. She has a later book, Exemplarist Moral Theory, and it's not specifically religious or Christian, but it, it can definitely be adapted. In in her earlier book, Divine Motivation Theory, it's, it's adapted from uh, a theistic and specifically Christian uh, point of view as she talks about Christ. Uh, as an exemplar. And, and so I think that book is is terrific. Um, my own inclinations lean that way. I, I'm not an ethicist or a value theorist, but uh, that, that book I thought uh, was, was quite good. If I could have an honorable mention, uh, it might be uh, Mark Murphy's God's Own Ethics. That too, very interesting, very different kind of approach, uh, especially since, again, this isn't my area, but 
it, it's quite common when we think about theism and ethics to either talk about natural law theory or to talk about divine command theory. And so Linda's approach with divine motivation theory, or we might now regard as a divine exemplars theory, uh, is pretty novel. And then uh, Mark's approach as well with thinking of an Anselmian being and then re recognizing that such a being would have no obligation to secure creaturely well-being. And so we can't just take the kind of obligations that you and I have you and I have uh, with, each, with respect to each other and then voice them uh, upon God. You know, God. God doesn't have those kinds of obligations. So I think um, his, his approach is quite interesting and again, is connected with addressing the problem of evil as well. I might throw in an honorable mention there since you mentioned an honorable mention by Mark <laughs> Murphy. Uh, so just to be clear, the book you're recommending as number four was Linda Zygzebski's a divine motivation theory. Yeah. Um, but then you said an honorable mention was Mark Murphy's God's Own Ethics. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to add an honorable mention to your honorable mention. That's that's what I'm trying to say. And that is Mark Murphy's latest book on holiness. Yeah, that's a good uh, one. Yeah. So I, I've so that this video doesn't get too long, I should, I'll probably just leave it there. But um, let's go on to number five. Yeah, so number five, it's it's an accessible book, but I think one that's terrific, and it's Rebecca de Young's Glittering Vices, so on the seven deadly sins. Um, she wanted to write this for an accessible, to, to make it accessible and to have a fairly wide audience, and I think it lands, but it's also very scholarly, it's informative, it delves quite deeply into um, moral psychology and the in the history uh in christian thought with regards to the capital vices uh, and i think not only is it theoretically fascinating but it's also practically rich i it made a huge impression on me as i thought about my own attempt at excising these vices with the help of the holy spirit and trying to cultivate uh, virtues and there are a lot of practical suggestions and she's so good at incorporating narratives and pop stories um, and, and classical stories as well that it, it's easy to to buy in and to and to think about ways in which we we can practice these things that have been a, a part of the christian tradition not just uh, we, we tend to focus as philosophers on the Christian intellectual tradition, but there's also Christian practical tradition. And a lot of this book focuses and highlights a lot of those elements. That book is so good and so rich and just full of wisdom mm -hmm. uh, that it's one of the few books that I keep returning to every, ever so often, you know, a little time passes and I go and I, I read a section out of it again. And it's, there's always something new. It's so good. So good. I would highly encourage people to pick up uh, Rebecca de Young's mm -hmm. book, Glittering Vices. All right. So that was a, to a top five list with some honorable mentions. Were there any additional honorable mentions that you wanted to throw in? I mean, there's, there's a lot of classic ones. <laughs> if I start listing, I'm not going to be able to stop. I mean, anywhere sure, from sure. Uh, Sam mentioned... Planiga's Warranted Christian Beliefs, so I can't mention that, but he has a shortened, simpler version of it. I, I believe it's called Knowledge and Christian Belief, so that's mm -hmm. terrific. Um, thinking about more accessible books, uh, Swinburne, he has a, Is There a God? That's supposed to be, again, a sim simplified version of some of his earlier works, Coherence of Theism, The Existence of God. On more specific uh, Christian philosophy, Mike Ray has uh, two collections of it's entitled Oxford Readings in Philosophical Theology. So it's a collection of a bunch of papers that were influential with regards to thinking about the Trinity, the Incarnation, Resurrection, Providence. So I think that's great. I may throw in one more uh, honorable mention as a type of um, general introduction. It's going to cover a lot of topics and try to relate them to Christian philosophy. And that is... J.P. Moreland and William Lane Craig's book, uh, uh, Philosophical Foundations for a Christian Worldview. I think there's a second edition. Mm -hmm. I think that deserves to be thrown into the list. There are some things in the book that I think they get wrong. They might leave out some important views. So I'm not saying it's a perfect introduction or anything like that, but uh, it does cover a lot of topics. Mm -hmm. And um, I, think it can, I think it can be useful uh, to many people, for sure. Mm -hmm. So. Um, 
I would I would throw that in as an honorable mention as well. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Yang, for coming on. I really appreciate you doing this. And uh, to the viewer, I want to say uh, keep exploring Christianity. Check out these books and see you next time.